Okay, everybody, so we are continuing with the carboxylic acid derivative playlist today. And in this case, we're going to start looking at the anhydride reaction. So remember, the ranking as far as carboxylic acid derivative reactivity is acid chlorides. We've now covered that topic. They are the most reactive of the derivatives. Then we have anhydrides. That's what we're going to talk about now. They're the second most. And then we'll do esters and finally amides. So you can expect that we're going to cover all of the various anhydride reactions. Now, this lecture is going to be a little bit shorter than the acid chloride lecture, and that is because anhydrides have a tendency to undergo reactions the same way that acid chlorides do, with the exception of they can't be turned into acid chlorides, whereas an acid chloride could be turned into an anhydride because it's higher on the reactivity list. Okay, so if you want more details, if you want more um, information regarding mechanisms, then I would suggest in the link below that you check out the other videos related to acid chlorides because that is they're going to follow the same exact mechanism. I'll show you one example here where we basically create the leaving group for the anhydride and then the rest of them I'm just sort of going to run through the reactions here. All right, so let's take a look at anhydrides so we can get an understanding of the chemistry and the reactivity behind them. So an anhydride in general is going to have the following form. It's got R C double bond O with another O group and then C double bond O with an R group. Now I will mention one of the things that's very common with anhydrides is for these two R groups to be the same. And that's because as you run these through reactions, the carbonyl is what's going to technically be attacked during these reactions. So if you have two carbonyls that have different groups, then you could have the potential for a mixture of products. It's not impossible, you can certainly do that, but most chemists avoid unneeded or undesirable side products. So let's say that I wanted R to be a methyl group. It wouldn't make sense for me to have an ethyl group over here, where then half the time I end up with a methyl group in my product, and the other time I end up with the ethyl group in my product, because this is going to split and send one portionality off as the leaving group and maintain the other. All right, now you could get into arguments about what if one group is much larger. So for instance, if I have a T-butyl versus a methyl, the T-butyl is going to be more hindering and less likely to be attacked at that point. But in general, we tend to stray away or stick with just the, the symmetrical anhydrides, um, whatever they might be. So just keep that in mind as I'm working through these examples here, because you may come up with a question and say, well, what if it attacked the other carbonyl? Usually we stick with identical anhydrides. Okay, so when we get ready to do this, the leaving group is not quite as reactive as the chlorine leaving group is, but it is still a resonance stabilized leaving group, and it's going to be the following. This will be the group that we see leaving the compound. And because we have the pi bond in proximity to this, right, this is going to be a resonance stabilized leaving group. And because I'm delocalizing the negative charge, that's going to weaken this as far as a base is concerned. Okay, so weaken the base. And remember that weak bases make good leaving groups. So this chunk of the anhydride is going to be considered a good leaving group when we get ready to do these reactions. So what can I do? I can turn the anhydride into an ester. So this is the one where I'll show you the mechanism. Again, this is going to sort of be a little bit of repeat for people that tuned into the acid chloride lectures. So what I could do here is I can use an alcohol, ROH, whatever my R group is of choice, and then I can use a base. So we'll go ahead and we'll use pyridine as our base. And when I do this, I'm going to have the O group attack the carbonyl, similar to it when it did this with an acid chloride and move this up, right? So what I end up with is I get the R, C, O, I get this tetrahedral intermediate, and I'm gonna have O, R, H. This would have a positive charge associated with it until I fix that with the base, and then I have the O, C double bond O R group, right? So what's going to happen here is that I'm going to have a leaving of this group that is resonance stabilized, and then I can reform this grouping right here. Okay, so if I do that, I then have R C double bond O 
and then the group over here is O, R, H, and again, I have the positive charge there. So at this point, the pyridine will come in to do its thing. It'll act as a base, and when it does that, it will pick up the hydrogen right here, and these electrons will go to the oxygen in order to get rid of that formal charge. And what I end up with is the ester. Okay, so by using the alcohol on the base, I get my ester functionality. And this makes sense because remember, again, the list, acid chloride, anhydride, ester. Anhydrides are more reactive than esters, so they can become esters, but not vice versa. An ester could not become an anhydride. So when we get to esters, you're not going to see anhydrides being formed directly from esters or acid chlorides because those are even higher. Okay, so that is an example of how we can get an ester from an anhydride. So what are some of the other reactions? Well, if you recall, the acid chloride ran through these in detail, but I'm going to list them here just so that we can keep track of all the other things that the anhydride can undergo. So an anhydride could undergo a reduction, okay? So we could use two equivalents of LAH, and then we could follow that up with H3O plus, and I would expect to find a primary alcohol at that point. All right, and the other thing that I could end up doing is similar to this, I could do two equivalents of Grignard or any other very reactive nucleophile. And so if I did that, similar to, again, the uh, acid chloride derivative uh, given these are all derivatives of carboxylic acid so if you have a group of derivatives you would expect I'm writing out the reduction there again you would expect that they're going to react in a similar manner they're going to behave in a similar way right so two I've got the H3O plus so I have CH3 MGBR and H3O plus and what I end up with there is I could get the C, now I would do this two times with the Grignard, so I'd have a CH3 here, a CH3 here, and whatever my other R group is, and then the OH, so I'd get a tertiary alcohol there, similar to what we've discussed previously. And don't forget that I can also, the amides, which are lower on the list than even the esters, could also be created from an anhydride. So the anhydride can utilize, again, remember we talked about that you can use two equivalents of a base that is nitrogen, or you can use one equivalence if your amine is expensive, and then you can use something like a hydroxide for your other base if you need to. So this would create the amide. Again, if you're confused about any of these mechanisms, go back and see the acid chloride lectures. And then finally, anhydrides are going to be very reactive in the presence of moisture or water. In fact, when you have anhydrides similar to acid chlorides, you need to store them away from water. You should not have water around your anhydrides. So if you do have water, okay, the water will most definitely complete a hydrolysis reaction where you can get your carboxylic acid back. Okay, so those are the additional. Essentially, it's going to be all of the detailed reactions from the acid chloride, except an acid chloride going to an anhydride. All right? Now in esters, it turns out that esters, as we start to lose some of the reactivity, some of the reactions can be a little bit different. So when we get to esters, we're going to talk a little bit more about the uh, creating of carboxylic acids from esters and vice versa, how we could turn an ester into a carboxylic acid, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this should cover uh, an example of any anhydride reaction that you might come across. And then when we do inevitably our practice session or problems where I create multiple uh, reactions or mechanism questions at the end of this lecture series, you'll have some exposure to that there as well. So hopefully everybody found this video useful. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, you can always check out our Udemy courses. They're very affordable. And if you purchase one, it helps to growing the channel and promoting online content that makes it free, easy, and affordable for you to learn. So thank you very much for spending time with us, and we will see you guys for the next lectures. Take care.